hello and welcome everyone uh, today uh, in this lecture we will talk about the truss uh, determinacy and stability of a truss uh, in our last couple of lectures we have seen the way how to analyze uh, the beam uh, and how we classify a beam as a determinate or indeterminate beam and uh, stable or unstable uh, these things we have already discussed so in this lecture we are interested to talk about the determinacy of truss so this is the chapter 4 from Astam Kasimali book so what about a truss a truss is an assemblage of straight members connected at their ends by flexible connections to form a rigid configuration if you remember from your CE211 and CE101 course, uh, all the members of a truss are uh, two force members, right? So, what are two force members? Basically, a two force member is, uh, is, 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 is are used in truss, and uh, a, a two force member is defined as there will be no load between the joints of a member for example if you look at this truss so this member you will not find any force between the joints of this member the, uh, the loads will definitely be applied at the joint so if it happens then this is called a two force member okay so a truss is a, a is an assemblage of uh, two force members and the members are connected at their ends by flexible connections Perfect. So now let let uh, let us talk about the plane truss. So what about the, what is the definition of a plane truss? If all the members of a truss and the uh, if all the members of a truss and the applied loads lie in a single plane, then the truss is called a plane truss. So what what is it is saying that all the members and the loads will be lied in a single plane then this truss is called a plane truss and these plane trusses are commonly used for in bridge and also uh, as a roof of building for example let me show you a plane truss here this is a uh, this is a framing of a roof supported by truss so this is a truss okay this is a plane truss why because all the members and if i apply load here or load like this way then all of these members and loads are in the same plane for example if i uh, so For example, if I apply load here, I am applying load here. So what happened? That uh, all the members, for example here we have a hinge support and here we have a roller support. So, uh, if we look then we will see that all of these members this member this member and these members the loads all of these are uh, uh, existed in a single plan in a same plan so this is called a plane truss and these plane trusses are commonly used in bridge and roofs of a building so uh, in CE311 Structure Analysis and Design 1 course, we will talk about the plane truss only. We will not talk about the compound truss or complex truss. Okay, this will be discussed in the next term. So, let us move on. What about the assumptions for trusses? There are three assumptions for the analysis of truss. Number one, all members are connected only at their ends by frictionless hinges okay and all loads and support reactions are 
applied only at the joints. So this is the condition of the two force members because the loads and supports they will be applied only at the joints. Okay, number three, the centroidal axis of each member coincides coincides with the line connecting the centers of the adjacent joints. It is kiro kam dhoro bridge jeta hai je amader onegula member thake. Mone kor for example ekhane ekta member ei jagay jodi amra jodi chinta kori ekta member dui ta tin ta char ta member thay na. Shob gula member er centroidal axis era ei je amader joint ei joint er centroid the pass korte hobe. तो ये रकम तीन टा कंडीशन हमादेर आछे फॉर द एनालाइसिस ऑफ ट्रस ओके इन दिस पेज पेज नंबर 92 देयर आर कॉमन प्लेन ट्रसेस दे आर गिवन सम एग्जांपल टेक अ नोट दैट इन पद्दा ब्रिज द दिस ट्रस आर यूज्ड इफ यू लुक एट द फिगर ऑफ पद्दा ब्रिज यू विल सी दैट दिस टाइप ऑफ ट्रस हैव बीन यूज्ड इन द पद्दा ब्रिज कंस्ट्रक्शन ओके good so these all are the plain truss and these are the so the truss actually are used uh, in bridges and also as a roof uh, roof okay so common roof trusses warren truss king post truss this truss look like this and uh, for the bridge this truss looks like this okay so you have to get some basic and uh, clear understanding so that whenever you see a truss figure you can classify uh, and you can understand this truss uh, will be used as a bridge or uh, will be used as a roof okay good now let's move on uh, uh, in CE211 or CE101 you have understood that uh, in a truss the mm, it the member will be experienced uh, axial tension or axial compression so axial tension is uh, like that the the forces are pulling apart and the forces if the forces are like this then it will be subjected in compression okay these are the old understanding we already know about this okay good now let's talk about the internal stability uh, how we can understand and uh, classify a truss uh, as internal stable or unstable okay read this section very clearly here we have some basic writing which we need to understand clearly okay we can define a plane truss as internally stable if the number and geometric arrangement of its members is such that the truss does not change its shape and remains a rigid body when detached from the supports. So, a jodi condition hai je amra jodi member gular arrangement and the support conditions are such that if we remove the truss from the support, then it remains its shape and remains a rigid body, then it is called internally stable. Okay, there are two terms internal and external. How they are classified. The term internal is used here to refer to the number okay, and arrangement of members. Uh, what are you saying? The number and arrangement of members. Okay. So the term internal is used here to refer to the number and arrangement of members contained within the truss. The instability due to insufficient external supports or due to improper arrangement of external support is referred to as external. We know that there are two types of stability. One is called internal stability and another is external stability. If the stability or instability occurs due to the number and arrangement of members, then it is called internal stability. And if the inter instability of the truss occurred due to the pro due to the improper arrangement of external support, then it is called external instability. Okay, good. So uh, we will not talk about this. Uh, let us talk. Let us let let me move on. Okay, the formula for the uh, 
to classify a truss as internally stable or not is m equals to 2j minus 3. m is the number of members, j is the number of joints. So if, uh, okay, good. So m equal to 2j minus 3, then it is called be, it will be an internally stable. Okay, compound trust will okay. look this this thing internal stability. If m is less than 2j minus 3, then the truss is internally unstable. If m is greater or equal to 2j minus 3, the truss is internally stable. So, whenever you see a truss, you have to identify how many members and joints are there, then you have to use this two formula. Perfect. Okay, let me. Uh, Hmm. Oh, fine. These things is very important. This section. What is it saying? Recall from our discussion of simple and compound truss uh, that in a stable truss, each joint is connected to the rest of the structure by at least two non-parallel members. Okay, and each portion of the truss must be connected to the remainder of the truss by connections capable of at least three non-parallel and non-concurrent force components otherwise it will not be a internal internally stable okay perfect so now let me show you an example example 4.1 okay what about this truss how many members are there 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there are 20 members and how many joints? There are 12 joints. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if I apply m equal to 2j minus 3, so 2j minus 3, it will be 24 minus 3, it means 21. So you have one less member, so it is internally unstable. So now in the question, if I ask you how you can make it internally stable, you will say, okay, sir, I have to add uh, just a member. For example, like this, if I use this member, then the member will be 21, 2j minus 3 will be 21. So this will be internally stable. Got the point? Okay. So this is the, this is done in uh, problem B. Okay. So, for example, if you look at this truss, we can easily understand that this truss is internally unstable. Why? Because if we apply load here, or if I apply load here, it will be deflected. So, but if I apply a, a member here like this, then it will be internally stable, which is done here. Correct? So, this is very easy. Now, okay. Now, all of this uh, stability is internally. Why? Because these things here, we are talking about uh, the arrangement of members, whether you have a less member or no. If we talk about, we are not talking about the support, right? So the, it will not be external uh, things. Stability will not be, instability will not be occurred due to external supports. These things are occurring due to the improper arrangement, in, due to the uh, insufficient number of members or member arrangement. So this is internal, internal stability. So now let us talk about the determinacy, indeterminacy and instability. Okay, good. The formula for the determinacy and indeterminacy is here. These things. Okay. Uh, what is it saying? Uh, it is in page number 102 okay 102 so m plus r less than 2j then it will be statically unstable truss m plus r equal to 2j statically determinate truss m plus r greater or equal to 2j statically indeterminate truss okay good okay So, what about here? If we look here, they are saying, okay, classify each of the plane truss. Uh, 
uh, as a st unstable or statically determinate or indeterminate if indeterminate then determine degree of indeterminacy okay so what we have to do we have to determine m plus r equals to 2j so now how many members are there we have 17 members and we have 10 joints so reaction will be 3 because one roller and two uh, two reactions will be at hinge support so it will be uh, 2j equal to 20 and m plus r equal to 20 so it means it's statically determinate truss uh, take a note that it is statically determinate externally why because support reactions are there okay so we will write statically determinate externally okay good so all of the truss you can do I, I believe what about here m equal to 10 uh, j equal to 7 okay Hmm. So if we uh, if we write uh, if you remember m plus r m two j minus three correct two j minus three so m is if m is less than two j minus three internally unstable let us check here so m equal to ten two j j two j minus three so 14 minus 3 11 so what about what happened here for this uh, sorry uh, what about here this uh, for this truss we know that m if m is less than 2j minus 3 then this truss is internally unstable so 2j minus 3 it becomes 11 and how many members you have 10 so this is uh, internally unstable you have to write that this truss internally unstable truss and but m m plus r equal to 2j so this is a statically determinate but it is uh, internally unstable okay similar thing it is unstable why it is unstable because uh, 2j minus 3 so uh, 16 minus 3 it will be 13 but it is saying that it is unstable uh, do you know why uh, because uh, it is statically determinate because m plus r equal to it will be uh, 13 plus 3 okay so uh, this truss is uh, we are see, we can see that it is internally stable also because uh, m is uh, equal to 2j minus 3 so it will be internally stable truss but it is saying it is unstable why because the just explanation is here it is saying that this truss is unstable because it contains two rigid portions a b c d and e f g is connected by three parallel members which cannot prevent the relative displacement the vertical reaction okay it means that this part and this part they are connected by three members is these three members and these three are parallel so there will be uh, if they, they cannot prevent the movement in the vertical direction with respect to one another okay that's why it is unstable so this is another condition that you cannot have three parallel members Sorry, means that the uh, the portions cannot be connected by parallel members of three. You you must have one member which is not parallel to the other two members. Okay, correct. If we look here for this truss, hmm, so this is statically determinate truss because m plus r equal to two j. Statically determinate externally. Okay, good statically determined okay so please uh, read carefully and these examples go through let me know if you have any questions okay